This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio C, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, August 18th, wherever and however you have connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who isn't exactly working on his dad bod, but he certainly no, works no. on a dad show, Jerem Jordan. This is definitely a dad show, as we learned yesterday from our uh, friend Jonathan uh, Hokuson. Uh, he told us that's how he says his name, right? Or Hokinson. It? Yes, it's Hoke. Hulk. Hokuson. Okay. Uh, his son Beckham came, uh, one of a bunch of fans that showed up. They had a great time, uh, which was awesome. Happy to be a part of that experience. He's a big-time BYU fan. Like, he's gone to a ton of games on the road. So Beckham, uh, his son, uh, is really funny. So uh, Jonathan put out a video of what he reacted to. He's three, and this is what it sounded like after the Cougar kickoff. Where's Jerem? Dad. Yep, Jerem. Where's Spencer? Oh, <laughs> did you have so much fun seeing them? Me. Um, 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 Do you like watching them on BYU Sports Nation? Me watch on Daddy's show. On Daddy's show? Yeah. Daddy turn on Daddy's show. Yep, I turn on my show. That's Daddy's show. It's dedication. <laughs> that is straight dedication. You know what? Okay, so the video, we watched it a few times and kind of got us thinking, you know, let's just restart the show. In three, two, one, go. This is Daddy Show. Presented by the BYU Store. Simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now live from Studio C, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is Daddy's Show, also known as BYU Daddy Show. Daddy Show! That's hilarious. Well, well I done. fully expect that for the next week. Video. Our appreciation to Beckham and Jonathan Hokinson and uh, frankly Jonathan's Everybody. wife who has agreed to let him travel to every road game. He's a real well. MVP. We yeah. met a lot of people. Do want to shout out uh, Connie who is is dealing with cancer uh, the last 18 months and said that the show is something positive in her life and helps her, which is unbelievable to us. So Connie, you got this. Yeah, we got this. We're with you. Hang in there. This show is fun to do anyway. It, yes. Things like that make it. A it's little like, bit easier to get up and absolutely. work long hours and have early mornings. Like it's, absolutely. It's so horrible. thanks to so everyone horrible. that watches. Uh, if you don't watch, all good. You're watching now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, last night was fun to meet everybody. It was great. Really fun. Great. Thanks for coming. Oh, here's your show lineup for Connie and all those elite BYU fans on this dad special. <laughs> Does the success of the BYU football season hinge, and I know it sounds dramatic, on the outcome of the first three games? Hear us out in just a moment on that. ESPN's Trevor Maddich will also answer that question. And does he feel like BYU is appropriately ranked at number 25? Plus, Izzy Stratton of BYU Women's Soccer and 62 and a half million reasons why every Big Ten school is feeling really good today. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. You can say that again. Fall camp practice 12 is today. The Cougars leave for Tampa in two weeks from today. How about that? Follow hmm. BYU Sports Nation on Twitter for post-practice interviews today at around 2.30 Eastern time. It's game night for BYU women's soccer. Hey! The season begins. Regular season play against Cal State Fullerton on the road at Titan Stadium, 7 p.m. Pacific. That's 10 Eastern. BYU leads the all-time series against the Titans. Seven wins, no losses, two ties, trying to stay unbeaten against Cal State Forward. Let's go. Then the schedule gets even tougher. Freshman soccer player Izzy Stratton is on the freshman best 11 by Top Story Soccer. We'll talk to Stratton later in the program. How about this? Rocking the BYU Sports Nation karma. Carson Lundell advances to the round of 32 at the U.S. Amateur at Ridgewood Country Club in New Jersey. Yeah. In his round of 32 match right now against a fellow West Coast Conference golfer from Pepperdine and two-time All-American, they are tied through 16 holes, Jerem. It comes down to the final two, maybe a playoff hole. Just heard that Carson went one down. So he's got- On 17? He's got to make a move. He's got to win 
18. Ah, he's got to win 18. He can do it. He can't tie. He's got to win it. Uh, David Timmons, by the way, lost three and two in his opening round of match play. But Carson, he got. But he got to the round of 64. Right? Yes, fantastic. fantastic. Carson wins here. He's in the round of 16. Hey, gravy. Getting to the round of 32, am amateur 64 for David Timmons. Uh, playing it all with the other two Cougs. Fantastic stuff. NFL preseason week two starts tonight. Kyrus Tonga and Dub Bears going up against my Seahawks. Best of luck to Kyrus. I hope your team loses, but that you have five seconds. <laughs> All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. ESPN's college football power rankings, just like the preseason Associated Press poll, have BYU right at number 25. Now, the power rankings did add the following comment, and I quote, Can the Cougars get off to a strong start? Because they'll face Baylor and Oregon in the second and third games of the season. What? A one and two start is clearly on the table. Continues. If that happens, the rest of the season won't have serious stakes because they are an independent team. It's precisely the scenario to show why joining the Big 12 Conference will be such a great move for the program. If the Cougars can get through those two games, Baylor and Oregon, 5-0 looks doable heading into a game against Notre Dame in Las Vegas. Amen. Okay, Jerem, huge first three games set for BYU. Does the success of the 2022 season hinge on the outcomes of the first three games of the season? It does not. It certainly will help, uh, but you can look to 06 and 07 uh, as you know examples of, hey, even if you stumble out of the gates, you can still – you can still make something out of that season for sure. Now, uh, in those seasons, BYU did not play Notre Dame and Arkansas and at Boise State, if you will, in those seasons. They had tough Mountain West Conference games, but not tough like that. So certainly, I think BYU needs to go 2-1 and one at least to maintain those goals of kind of 9-plus, right? We're assuming that uh, in BYU's big four, the, the hope, at least for me, tell me what you think, is to split in those, two and two. Is that how you feel? For sure, okay. yeah. In the, in the Power 5 games, and there are five on three the schedule this year, two. I have BYU slated to go three and two. Three and two. This gives you uh, no room, if we want BYU to go ten and two in the regular season, to have a G5 stumble. Last year, the G5 was uh, more of an issue than the P5s. BYU went six and one versus Power 5s, but lost twice to G5, so one in a bowl game, of course, as we've talked about. So it, I don't know that it hinges on it. You, I, I can see the argument for yes, where it's like, well, ha, if you go one and two, how are you going to split with Notre Dame and Arkansas? I do think Arkansas is a winnable game at right, home. Right, But it is right after Notre Dame, and that's going to be a physical contest. comes down to defining success at that point, right? Yeah, like, it, like what is success? Right, if you're like, I think we're in the same boat here of, of nine-plus regular season. That would be a Nine massive plus success. plus regular season. Then, then you need to go <laughs> – if you go one and two out of the gate, you're, you're in trouble. BYU's got to beat South Florida, of course. And then split, Baylor-Oregon is totally acceptable, right? And then, uh, let's be honest, the split with Notre Dame and Arkansas is, is good as well. Um, and we'll ask Trevor Maddich his opinion on, like, these big four games. There will be another game that will merge bigger than one of these four probably. That's just how football plays out. Like, maybe it's Boise State. Maybe Utah State's – Friggin' awesome again or something. I yeah, don't what, what if Boise State's like, have one loss or undefeated? They're what a top if, 20 team. What if Boise is Boise? They're back what, to their normal what if, what if Boise State's the top same? 20 program self. Okay, here's how I'd quantify this, by the way. One and two is, oh, crap. <laughs> Three and oh is, whoa, this might be special. Uh, two and one is, we're on track. Let's go. Three and oh would be magical. Literally. Straight up Baylor magical. Baylor and Oregon? If BYU beats South Florida... Baylor and Oregon, and they start three and zero. They'll be a top eight team in the country. BYU will be they'll the top. They'll be. In the, up they will the be in the top ranking. Eight. Seriously, like top ten at worst. If you beat ten and eleven in the preseason rankings, back to back weeks on top of winning, hopefully in an impressive fashion at USF, the Cougars will be a top ten team. Two and one feels like the mark of any realistic shot of BYU winning like nine games. Certainly 10 games. Like, if BYU is going to win 10 regular season games, they have to start minimum, two at a minimum yeah. two and one. Yep. So how do you define success? Because we're asking, okay, does the success of BYU season hinge on the first three games? Well, if you define success by 10 wins, then, yeah, 
It probably does hinge on the results of the first three games because now BYU has to get a split against Oregon and Baylor and start two and one. Ten's high. Like nine is pro- to to me is probably like yes. You if and I feel like nine. Yes, eight and four. I'm a little disappointed, frankly. I think this team's really good. Nine would be a success. I also think the teams BYU is playing are pretty good. Like those four. But again, let's play those out. Chances are those aren't four top twenty-five teams when the t- season finishes. If that's the case, 8-4 and four would actually be acceptable historically. We just feel very confident about this team, the momentum of the last two years, the experience to bring back with extra COVID year. It's like, why can't this team go 9-3+. and three plus? I said yesterday, I'm a little concerned if BYU doesn't go 9-3+, and three plus with this group, because they have more experience than maybe any BYU team ever spent because of COVID. Like, how, how, how's BYU going to compete for Big 12 titles if this team can't handle this schedule? That's what I want. Like, I need to see. Sure. And certainly you can elevate the talent and the whatever. But, like, BYU, we, how much better do we expect BYU to be in the Big 12 in terms of on the field, in terms of talent? Like, we expect a bump, but I don't know that I expect, like, a 25% bump, maybe a 10 or 15% bump. So this team needs to show us that BYU in the future at some point is going to compete for and win a Big 12 title. So – Yes. Against we'll, the schedule. We will notice it, we think, in recruiting the most, right? Like BYU more Kingsley's, getting better. More yes. And so on. Getting more of those yeah. high level yep. recruits. Uh, but doesn't, a, I mean, going back to the numbers of, of the first three games, just to close out this thought, doesn't a one and two start scream eight and four season? Yeah. It screams you're, you're, eight You're and headed four. that direction. Because if you start one and two, now you're like, oh, man, if we want to win nine go games. seven and two. At that point, you want to win nine games after you start one and two in the regular season. You got to go eight and one, yeah. like oh, so, and you still have to play Notre Dame, Arkansas, and at Boise yes. State. Seven and two is realistic at that point. You reset expectations. One and two and you start. Go, we're going for eight screams wins. eight and four in the regular yep. season. Two and one. Now we're talking. Now we're on par with what we think BYU should be capable of doing. They yep. should get nine wins. They should start two and one. We think they're good enough to do that. They are good enough. Let's right. go. Okay, topic two. The Big Ten has the richest TV contract in college (laughs) league history with an average of at least a billion dollars a year for seven years. And its new TV contract amounting to about $62.5 million a year per school starting in the fall of 2023. One billion dollars. Nice work, Rutgers in Maryland. Uh, With that in mind, what are we hoping for with the Big 12 deal in 2025 now that we know what happened with the Big Ten? Uh, We're hoping for the Big 12 to do what Texas Tech's athletic director said it would do, and that is maintain what they are picking up right now. (laughs) I don't see how that's going to happen. Which is somewhere in the neighborhood of... They did 42.6 million. 40 million a year. Like, if if the Big 12 can be anywhere close to that number, fantastic. Like, if frankly, if the Big 12 can be half of the $62.5 million per year per school... I think they're in a pretty good place. That's where I'm at too, Spence, because 42.6 feels high without Texas and Oklahoma. Yes, there's quality that you're bringing into the league, obviously. We feel in a biased way in every opinion on the show. Is that, uh, yeah, the Big 12 is, is in a good spot. But you didn't, you didn't add a USC, UCLA, Texas, Oklahoma. 40, 40 mil is going to be a lot. Now, what we hope is that next summer when probably they start negotiating the new TV deal that kicks in in 2025, that we continue to have this sort of inflation and, and bloated numbers and maybe streaming and someone else comes in. We'll see, man. But, like, the Big Ten and SEC, it's another level. is never going to be in a league, or the Big 12 won't be a league that approximates that. Let's just – we're all on the same page there. If you don't think that, you don't get how it works. Yeah, we, we hope for half. And a reminder, in 23 and 24, BYU will get half of the existing deal. And then in 25, BYU gets a full share. So they're going to get $21 million-ish. In the first two years before which, they're fully integrated into whatever the new deal yes, is. Which we think about doubles what BYU has. We don't know that number publicly, but it, it's a significant increase for BYU. To Any, double your number is pretty awesome. Anything in the ballpark of $31 million a year for the new Big 12 contract losing Texas and Oklahoma is a major win. I think what BYU fans really want, though, is that it's $1 more than the Pac-12. Absolutely. That's, I was just going to say. That it's more than Utah we in talked some way. About that this. matters to the fans. Yes. We talked about this matters. a few weeks ago. All that matters to BYU fans is that BYU is getting more money to their program per year than Utah and the Pac-12. <laughs> hold, that's, hold on, that's I'm what it has come. John Wilder, what's up? Do you, what's the latest? From it the is Pac-12? petty. It's silly, <laughs> but it is 
the reality of what BYU fans want. Well, I don't care what BYU gets. Is it more than the Pac-12 in Utah? Yeah. Oh, okay, win. Okay, 31 million. I feel like that could happen, like with inflation, and the, we're seeing just like these massive blown-up contracts. Clearly, with the Big 12, or sorry, the Big 10. Like, I think 31 million isn't out of the realm of possibilities. If it's 40. If it's 40 that would million be a percent, massive success. And I do feel like I need to clear something up because I have a lot of fans ask me, what about the Big 12 basketball, though, Spencer? Because you have to factor in the value of that, too. And I'm like, it's a little bit different when TVs, uh, TV stations and networks are signing up college football teams. Football is king. Yeah, like, no, no one's arguing. That. Basketball may have a little bit of a sway in this, okay? Uh, some chips that they can move. This is not about basketball. As good as the Big 12 basketball will be, this is a football ideal with the TV money. And so they are paying primarily 99% for a football product. So, as, again, as good as the Big 12 basketball is going to be, and it'll be amazing, it's not going to have a ton of sway in getting BYU and these football deals, and these football contracts, the TV networks, more money. Yeah, I wish it did, but it's not going to have a ton of chips in that matter. Yes, it's all about football. By the way, I found a publicly uh, listed information space where uh, all sports revenue for BYU was listed. I believe this was from last year. Okay. It didn't say 2021, but I assume it was the last year. Who revealed this private information? <laughs> well, it's, it's public information. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, equity and athletics data analysis. Uh, some of this, I assume, it includes the TV money that BYU gets. BYU's revenue from athletics, all sports, was 39.6 mil. Wow. So d doing well. You, you add another uh, you know, 10 mil, and then later maybe another 10 mil. Hey, you're doing things that you haven't been able to do. And BYU Athletics does a tremendous job of selling its product, and hopefully it's yes. worth even more in the Big 12. Hey, in Brett Yormark and his uh, now Big 12 leadership, we trust. He's a businessman. Jay-Z, can you come through for us? <laughs> can you come through for BYU in the Big 12? Jay-Z. <laughs> Our question of the day, back to BYU's first three games. Will the success of BYU football's 2022 season hinge on the outcome of the first three games? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Art Director BYU on Twitter, friend of the program, says the awesome thing about college football is success hinges on every game. So, yes. Hashtag BYUSN Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's true. Show up against South Florida, win that game. <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> that just derails everything. Let's have a top 25 showdown coming back for the home open oh. under the lights at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. September 10th. On September 10th. Dave McCann's thinking about the Jets. Let's go. Coming up, the meeting that happened that could affect the future of college football. And ESPN college football insider and analyst Trevor Maddich joins us to discuss those first three games. Does he think that success lies in the outcome of what happens against those three? He'll answer it next on BYU Sports Nation. Customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com.
Do you not know the groom's name? I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is, like, share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy, like, helped us through things, like, we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make-a-wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be, like, these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Subscribe to the BYU Sports Nation YouTube channel for interviews from the show, what's trending, and whole episodes as well. Subscribe today. We are live in Studio C. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside Jerem Jordan. You know it's college football season when we are welcoming ESPN college football insider Trevor Maddich He's back, back on the show. Technically, it's a Maddich Thursday. We do Maddich Monday, but it's preseason. We don't care so one day. We have some preseason Maddich interviews on Thursday. Trevor, welcome back to the program. It's great to be back, guys. I can't wait for kickoff. Oh, man. Look at you, mountain man. Looking good. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, I think my wife says she likes it. I think it's because it covers half my face, so I'll, I'll keep it as long as she wants me to. <laughs> Nature's mess. <laughs> Once again, it always matters what the wife cares about most. Trevor, uh, we were discussing in our opening segment the first three games for BYU specifically at USF, which is a sneaky game. BYU comes home to host the defending Big 12 champions, Baylor, and then they go on the road to Eugene and take on a very interesting Oregon team. That's two top 15 opponents in the first three games and a trip to Florida. Uh, what do you think of BYU's overall status uh, and the three games leading off the season and how they'll impact the entirety of the season? Well, it's, it's an opportunity to start fast or an opportunity to start slow. And so there's really a lot of, a lot of I don't want to say risk, but there is a lot of opportunity here in these first three games. The USF game is, is very tricky going to Tampa to play that game because USF's focused on this game the entire offseason and the players will be focused on it. Whereas BYU's players, the coaches try to focus them on that opener against the Bulls, but everybody knows that then comes Baylor, then at Oregon. And so how focused will BYU be? The, the, those first three games need to start with a win and a win with good execution against USF because without that, then they're on their heels heading into those other two. And when we look at the first three, the opportunity of a successful season we've just talked about really hinges on whether BYU can do that or not. Certainly they can recover like we talked about, but BYU no six and 07 had 11 and two seasons started one and two. They had to win 10 games in a row. How do you feel like BYU could fare in those first three in your opinion? You know, I think USF is – BYU should win that game, but ESPN's FBI football power index gives USF a 35% chance to beat BYU in that opener. So, according to ESPN's FBI, it's not a slam dunk. They have almost everybody back on both sides of the ball. And Jerry Bohannon, the quarterback of Baylor that won the – Big 12 championship with the Bears last year and helped to beat BYU last year. He is now the starting quarterback for South Florida. So there's all kinds of reasons for BYU to take that game very seriously. Baylor has one of the best combinations, offensive line and defensive line in all of college football. I mean, they will be a physical meat grinder in the trenches. Now, BYU is in better shape now because BYU also has one of the best offensive lines in college football. And it being early in the season, assuming they get out of USF healthy, they'll have a lot more depth to rotate through on their defensive line, but that'll be brutally physical. And then Oregon also has one of the best combinations of offensive line plus front seven defensive line and linebackers in all of college football. So, so those two games right there at the very beginning of the, of the season will test BYU's not just skill, but test their physicality and their depth. I mean, there is a lot of risk there, but once again, a lot of opportunity because BYU is also better than it was. ESPN college football insider and analyst Trevor Maddich is back on BYU Sports Nation. It feels dramatic, Trevor, to ask this and think this, but – does the overall success of BYU season hinge on the results of the first three games? It does not. I mean, you guys mentioned it. The, if, they, if they win, if they go 3-0, and 
I mean, as a hypothetical, that would be just astonishing. And it gives them a lot of slack in heading into another brutal month of October. If they go one and two, then they've got to succeed in October in order to have the kind of season that they want. Because, I mean, we talk about Oregon and Baylor, both top 11 preseason poll. Then you've got in October Notre Dame and Arkansas. And those two are also two of the most physical offensive and defensive lines in all of college football, especially on the offensive side. So you've got four games, BYU, in September and then October against four of the most physical teams in the trenches that anybody will face all year long. And so if BYU struggles in September in those first three games, then it makes it imperative that they play exceptionally well against Notre Dame and Arkansas and win at least one of those, if not both. But if BYU can split Baylor and Oregon, then they go into October with an opportunity to split those two and maybe even do better. Then all of a sudden, we look at this season in a completely different way. Because after that, the toughest game will be at Boise. And so... BYU has great opportunities, but what you don't want to do is put yourself behind the curve from the very beginning. Now there's pressure. Now people are talking about you. Now you're wondering what you can really be, right? They're much better off starting fast. And starting fast means to get out of the blocks and perform well against all three of those teams. And if they can win two of those three games, then this season has great promise even if they drop one of them in September. Absolutely. I love the way you quantified that, which is get to split with Baylor and Oregon, get to split with Notre Dame and Arkansas in some capacity. Obviously, if you can do better than that, that's great. But realistically, getting split in both would be very good. How do you feel about BYU this year and its potential to win, say, nine or ten games? Because a lot of the metrics and national analysts are saying BYU is kind of in the seven and eight range. We feel like BYU is more in the nine-plus range. How do you feel? I think from a skill standpoint and a depth standpoint, BYU is in as good a shape as they've been in a long, long time. And I think what analysts are looking at in some measure is FPI, Football Power Index. BYU is the underdog in five of their games. BYU, according to the FPI, as we sit here today, is uh, an underdog at Boise with a 43 percent chance to win against the Broncos on their home field, on Broncos' home field. And so. Uh, I think they're looking at that saying, okay, well, how can BYU win a lot of those games, especially because of the nature of, of the teams that they're playing? Uh, I agree with you, though. BYU's offensive line has a chance to be one of the best that they've ever had there. This is a deep receiving core. If the tight ends are healthy, they will be a threat. You've got you've got a good rotation at running back with the transfer in from Cal. And then if Jaron Hall can stay healthy at quarterback, this offense should be absolutely phenomenal. Then it's a matter of staying healthy on defense, especially up front. And the key to their season, really the key to those big games in September and October, may come down to the defensive line being able to generate pass rush. That, to me, is the key. You know, they've had to really bring linebackers to get consistent pass rush. And this year, Coach Shataki has talked about how this is maybe the fastest group of corners he's ever had. They may be able to leave those guys on an island a bit more and do some more blitzing and some crazy stuff up front. But still... The D-line has to be able to generate pass rush organically. And if they're able to do that, then I agree with you. That, that nine-win threshold, or maybe even more, uh, is available. But their, their floor will be determined by the health of the defense especially and the pass rush of the defensive line. The ceiling will be determined by the, the offense and if they're able to come together and be everything that we think they can be. Trevor, I'm hearing you talk about all the dynamics of this BYU football team that we have analyzed and overanalyzed ad nauseum over the last few months. And I'm looking at that number 25 ranking in the AP preseason poll and, and still kind of feeling like BYU, in my completely unbiased opinion, <laughs> that they're ranked a little bit lower than I thought they should have been. How do you feel about BYU's preseason ranking and where they stack up against the rest of the top 25? Yeah, not terribly biased, although I do see the color of the shirt that you're wearing. There. <laughs> I, I, you know, the, being ranked 25, I think a lot of a lot of BYU fans would be disappointed by because I think this is a much better team than that. I think somewhere somewhere between maybe 18 and 15 it would be a good place to put them until we learn a bit more about their defense. But being ranked preseason hasn't happened for a while. What's yeah. it been, like over a decade since they were ranked in the yep. preseason? 13 years. And, and that's a 
Yeah, and that's important. And I think that is a testament to the the respect that BYU has been able to, to garner in the national media and through the national coaches as well with the way that they performed over the last you know period of time under Coach Sataki. And so I think people look at BYU now a little bit differently than they did before. Instead of saying, hey, prove it, they say, you know what, we think you're really good. And they start that way. Now, the fact that they're in there at number 25 is a talking point, but it also is a point of visibility. Because, you know, the higher you start, when you win, the easier it is to stay up higher, right? And so they've got a lot of ground to make up in order to have the fantasy season that they want. The good news is, though, being ranked 25th in the, in the preseason has absolutely zero effect on that fantasy outcome. The hypothetical that the most rabid fans are thinking about every season, can BYU make the playoff? Well, their preseason ranking isn't going to affect that because the schedule that they have, if they have uh, no losses or even one loss, BYU is going to be in that discussion. No losses, they're in. They have to be. The uh, With one loss, they're in the discussion. So BYU does control their own destiny there. So I, I, I see it as a positive that they're ranked at all preseason just because it hasn't happened for a long time. Now, keep in mind, I'm not predicting they're going to run the table. I'm saying that they will have a chance to win every game they play. And so we'll see what happens one by one by one. ESPN's Trevor Maddish says BYU will go undefeated this season. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. Let's talk about the Big Ten <laughs> uh, new TV deal. Comes out this morning, starting next fall. Seven-year deal, seven billion dollars uh, a bill a year, sixty-two and a half mil average per team. What do you think of that? And then, how do you think that affects BYU's uh, Big Twelve deal coming up in 2025? I don't think it will affect B, uh, the Big 12 deal directly. Obviously, the the teams not, or excuse me, the conferences not named Big 10 and SEC are going to be way behind, way behind in terms of of money per school. But there's a couple things happening here. One is that as streaming continues to dominate, as binge watching continues to dominate, live sports continue to become more and more important. Because advertisers know that you can't record a, a live game and then watch it later, really. It just people you can, but people don't do that. They're right there in front of the TV. So they're not fast forwarding through commercials for the most part. They are they are sitting there watching the game. And there's a lot of value to that. And so we don't know the full effect of the of competition that may happen with streaming companies for the remaining grants of rights for the remaining broadcast rights beyond the ACC, which has got 14 years to go on theirs, and then the <laughs> Big Ten and then the SEC. You know, as as the as the Big 12 and Pac-12 come up, you know, the Pac-12 first and the Big 12, you, you've got, if you have competition among streaming companies, they will bid up the price because the Big 12 and the Pac-12 will be the, the next best thing that's available for them if they want to get into the live sports game. And that's important. And with this Big 10 deal, uh, NBC is a part of it, and they will be streaming games on Peacock. That's important because what is Discovery Plus thinking? What is Apple TV thinking? Does Netflix want to jump into this? Does Amazon Prime want to jump into more than they already have with the NFL Thursday night package? And so these are things that we don't know. So I wouldn't automatically assume that the Big 12 and the Pac-10 and, and Pac-12, Pac-10 now, I guess, going forward, I wouldn't automatically assume that they're going to be poppers. Let's wait and see what the next deal brings to see if there is competition among the streaming companies because that could be a huge game changer. Trevor Maddich is worth $62.5 million per year as a college football analyst, and I will die Ooh. on that hill. Trevor, it's great to catch up with you again. Looking forward to a fantastic college football season. I want you to know that I got the 62 and a half so I could share that half with you guys. <laughs> we'll take anything we can get. Thanks, Trevor. All right, guys. Trevor Maddich. I'd take that half. He's back, baby. I'd take that half that means right college, now. That means college football is basically back. Yeah, it's, it's, we're so close, man. We're so close. Okay, coming up, speaking of back, women's soccer tonight, game day, season opener. Izzy Stratton joins us live from Fullerton, California. Plus, is Ty Detmer... The Brett Favre of college football. In what way? We will explain next. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? 
Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrum.com. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Home is just about to get a whole lot happier. So you've been living with no furniture for about two months. Well, we're about to change that for you. Watch as helpful folks lend a hand to those in need. See them refurbish and replenish homes all over the world. Caitlin left her house when she was 13, and now she's finally home. With all kinds of shows to explore on the BYU TV app, you're sure to find loads your family can watch together. Stream them all for free. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. To interact with BYU Sports Nation, get content throughout the day. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jeremiah I'm Spencer. Welcome back to the show. Just got this tweet in, Jeremiah, from our friend Cougar Stats. I saw it. BYU scheduled to play ranked teams in two of the first three games. Yep. The only other seasons where they opened with at least two ranked matchups in their first three games was six different seasons. 91 went 0 and 3. The other four seasons they went 1 and 1 in those ranked uh, games. But in 2021, 2 and 0, obviously. We're hoping this becomes the trend where okay, BYU can compete at a high level. But again, this is a special group riding some momentum with a ton of experience. Yeah. If if any group can do it, it's this one. Here's the 2 and 0 against those ranked teams. Clink. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. ESPN's Pete Thamel reports college football playoff board briefly discussed, five minutes worth, the potential of major college football operating outside the NCAA governance yesterday. All right. Will college football be a non-NCAA sport sometime in the next 10 years? I believe it will be. I just think there's too much traction, too much noise in regard to that happening. Uh, I think the NCAA has their hands on every other sport, but football is just an entirely different beast. It feels like it's going to happen certainly in the next decade. I believe so as well. March Madness, the big product. They run all the championships. The only championship they don't run currently is college football. College football playoff. So why wouldn't it break away? More autonomy for whoever that group is that's running it. It's headed that direction with NIL and the Chester. Who's going to run it is the real question. Get a, get a commissioner. Be very interesting to see what happens there. The Athletics' Matt Brown tweeted about old college football passing stats yesterday. This is fun. And added this one. One of my favorites, stats, is that Ty Detmer threw more interceptions, 28, <laughs> in his Heisman season than the past four Heisman winners combined. Wow. 26. Jeremy, is Ty Detmer the ultimate gunslinger in college football history? I did not realize that Ty had thrown that many interceptions. <laughs> that did not include the bowl game, by the way, either. Um, okay, it's fifth most in, in NCAA history, but it's not as many as your boy John Ekman of Wichita State, who amazingly threw 34. 34 interceptions in a in season. One season. And I think seven touchdowns. And How I'm, did he keep his job? I'm gathering he didn't throw for 5,000 yards and win the Heisman. No, either. Ty threw for a gajillion yards that year, right? Um, not to mention, of course, 41 touchdowns. Uh, but when you look at the last couple of years, those numbers have been pretty low for BYU. So that brings us to a stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. In the last four seasons, BYU has thrown 27 interceptions total, notably five last year with Jaron Hall, three the year before that with Zach Wilson. Aaron Roderick's quarterbacks don't throw a lot of picks. But it was a different era, different time, and you'll take uh, the yards and touchdowns that Ty put out. Yeah. 
and he, he threw a bunch of picks against Miami, you still win the game. Like, you can make up for that. Yes. Very rare is a seven-step drop in today's college football. Seven-step drop. But we saw Ty so Demmer doing that on the regular. Five- and seven-step drops, downfield passing attack. Everything was down the field. It just, it's just it's a different a game now. Ball gets out quick. Yeah. yeah. By the way, uh, going back 28 interceptions ago for BYU, think about, like, like – from rewind yes, 20 interceptions ago. Yep. Okay. It was November 18th, 2017. Joe Critchlow threw four interceptions in the loss to UMass. <laughs> yeah. Have I, I have you gone I to a I don't acknowledge that game. You've gone to a bad place. <laughs> that game doesn't exist. <laughs> you lost to UMass. <laughs> oh. Okay, uh, let's move on because that, that <laughs> stinketh to me. In uh, their opponent preview, the website Mountain West Wire said the following uh, in the BYU portal. Oh, a Mountain West preview of BYU. Yep, predicted that, uh, you know, uh, BYU would uh, lose to multiple Mountain West opponents, namely Utah State and Boise State, okay. but would beat Wyoming. Okay. Is this more or less ridiculous than the Mountain West five teams in the top 44 tweet? This is more ridiculous. This, this is more cool. ridiculous? Well, I mean, they're both ridiculous, right? <laughs> but I just look at the idea of Utah State beating BYU in Provo this year, and I think, no way. It's not happening. It's not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We said that as well in previous years. No, 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 no it's, not, it's not happening. So I do want to it's be happening. a little careful, but... Yeah. Like, the Mountain West is an improved conference. Hell, absolutely. So I'm more, I'm, I, I can, like, relate a little bit more Utah to the State's idea. Utah has been that, on the coattails of BYU's league like, for a long time. Oh, we're in the whack now. We're in the Mountain like West now. Like, they're projecting What, are you going to try and get in the Big 12 now, too? They're projecting Boise go State to beat BYU. Yeah, whatever. Like, again, that feels like it could happen. Utah State beating BYU in Provo this year? No. The no. five teams in the top 24, 44 is by far more ridiculous Why? than this. Why? Because there was zero in the top 25. Your point is so stupid. That's almost as bad as when Penn State was like, Penn State has produced a player that played uh, in the Super Bowl okay. every year. So, and then so like, like in big, and then in, it was like, except for 1967, 92, <laughs> and 2007. Really, they're saying there are five Mountain West teams between 26 and 44? Yes. <laughs> we have five teams that got votes. That's what they meant by Wait, that. When I look at it through that's that, what they meant by that, through that lens, that that's. It's stupid. That's, yeah, that's, that's silly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just, I see Utah State beating <laughs> BYU in Provo. No, no. <sighs> I don't see it either, no. but we didn't see it in 2014 no. either. So, health to everybody. Coming up, rise and shout out to the homies last night. And Izzy Stratton, one of those fabulous freshmen for BYU women's soccer, joins us from practice on Soccer Game Day. Hey! The season starts tonight. Let's go! This is BYU Sports Game. The Braves are ready! Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine. 
be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. After a run to the national title game, number three, BYU women's soccer begins the regular season tonight at Cal State Fullerton. Listen to it on the BYU radio app at 10 Eastern time. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio C. We have a bit of breaking news here, Jerem. This just in, BYU soccer's Jamie Shepard and Leveni Vaca are both on the 2022 Mac Herman Trophy watch list given annually to the best women's college soccer player in the country. Yeah, let's go. They both deserve that. Uh, they they are two of BYU's best players. Shepard moving from the holding mid six spot to the attacking midfielder ten spot uh, that Michaela Coulihan played. And then Leveni Vaca was uh, probably BYU's best uh, perhaps defender last year. She was an incredible center back uh, among really talented groups. So well deserved by both of them. Yeah, the Vaca sisters. Daviana has made a huge step forward. Said it's Dav too. Daviana. Daviana. Okay, all right. Well, it, you interviewed both of yeah. them. Yeah. Daviana. No, yeah. Okay. Or Daviana. I can't even remember now. What, what was it again? Dang it. Rewind the tape. Yeah, what was it? Uh, the Vaca sisters, yes. regardless, are going to be a huge part. BYU is yes. going to have, um, and we're finding this out through the exhibition against Notre, or North Carolina, they'll have some difficulties in figuring out how to get on the attack like they did the past two years. Like It's, it's going to be a transition period. Michaela okay. Coulihan and Cameron Tucker are two of the top ten goal scorers in BYU history. Uh, Michaela um, Coulihan was a finalist for the Mac Herman Trophy watch. It's not just on the list. She was a finalist. To me, Coulihan is the greatest player in BYU women's soccer history. It's not about um, goal total per se. It's about impact on the field and the special run of leadership in getting all the way to the national title yes, game. Like, yes. It, it's, uh, there have been some amazing athletes uh, that have played you know, soccer at BYU. She's been the best to me. Kayla Coolhan. So those are certainly holes to fill. Uh, but BYU really loves some of the players that um, haven't played as much but are going to get a shot sure. at a higher level. We've seen Rachel McCarthy be fantastic as a forward. Yeah, She's going to have a great season, uh, they feel like. And then uh, a player like Ruby Hadlick, who made like every shot in practice when I went uh, last week. She was incredible. She's going to get more PT. They always load up with freshmen. Uh, Ali Fryer is going to be a star. Izzy Stratton, who we're going to hopefully talk to here in just a moment from Fullerton, is a uh, going to be a star as well at five foot eleven, tremendous in the air, uh, fourteen rebounds a game in basketball type player. Like that physicality is going to be awesome uh, as a wing back for BYU. So uh, yeah, I, I'm very excited about this group. Are they are they too high at number three? I, I do believe they're a little too high. I, I would put them in the like ten to fifteen spot. I even feel like women's volleyball probably should be like around uh, closer to 15 than 10. But I love the respect that women's soccer and women's volleyball gets that football did not. They are getting the respect in the preseason poll that we sort of seek, right? I, I almost love that I'm like, well, I'd put them around here, but it's fun that they're this high. Um, so play it like you want it. Sure. Do, do you want to be the underrated, undervalued team and fight your way up? Or do you want to be valued super high right from the start? Volleyball's kind of in the middle, right? You got soccer at number three, football at number 25, and then volleyball uh, in, in the middle of that. I think volleyball is the best of those three teams, by the way, and all three are very good. And as we pointed out uh, a few days ago on social media and on the show, first time since 1997 that BYU has football, women's volleyball, and women's soccer all ranked in the top Love five it. of their respective polls. That's so cool. You've got to go back 25 years the last time those three teams were all nationally ranked at the same time to begin a season. That's Soccer and cool. volleyball, we're yeah. used to this. Football came into the conversation this year, finally. Well earned. <laughs> Just in, but still well earned. It is now our pleasure to welcome in one of those freshman phenoms. As promised, Izzy Stratton joins us on yeah. game day for BYU Women's Soccer. Izzy, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer and Jim. Thank you. <laughs> uh, are you on the practice field right now? Yes, we are. We're out here. We're getting a little pre-practice in before, before our game tonight. Is Jen cool with you doing this interview, or are we going to pay the price later? <laughs> oh, she's cool with it. She's cool with it. <laughs> well, congratulations on uh, being named to uh, Top Tour Soccer's Freshman Best 11. That's pretty cool. Obviously, a uh, ton to prove, not, not only individually, but with this team. So what's it like now playing for BYU as a freshman and about to start the season tonight? 
it is a dream come true literally like i've been dreaming of this moment since like i was eight years old and now that i'm actually here like it's so surreal and i just am like so grateful and blessed to be here Wow. The season begins tonight against Cal State Fullerton. Obviously, you learned some lessons against North Carolina. What did the game at North Carolina do to prepare you for this game tonight when it really matters in the standings? Yeah, we definitely we went over film a lot after our UNC game. Definitely a learning moment for our team. And we just came back with a fire burned under us. Like, hey, like, this is our chance to prove ourselves after an incredible season um, last year, and we can do it again this year. And it really just like lit a fire, at least in me, that we have something more to prove. And that loss really, I don't know, made me motivated to be a lot better this game. You're part of a talented freshman group, most of which enrolled early in January, and then you guys played in the spring games and went 9 0 1. What did that do for your preparation for the season, being enrolled early and playing in all those games? Yeah, I think it made all the difference um, coming in January. Uh, definitely a good decision after going through it. Um, just being able to be with all the teammates and getting to know them and playing all the games and learning the, the formation that we play. I think it really made all the difference um, now that we're starting the fall. Well, you've had plenty of time to figure out where exactly you're going to fit in on the field. So where is your position uh, as a member of this starting 11 for BYU? Um, so right now I'm playing center back um, because our captain Nat um, has had a stre stress fracture in her foot. So I'm I'm playing center back right now. I can also play holding mid, but right now I'm playing center back. Okay, with Leveni, I like it. And you're 5'11", a big target in the air. Yeah. I mentioned uh, your 14 rebounds a game in basketball, 19 points per game. So y you can box people out in the box, I take it? Yes, I did play basketball in high school, so yeah. I definitely think my height is one of my advantages on the field. Will, will we see you in the air on corner kicks this year as well? I sure hope so. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work in practices. Uh, Brecken is really good at putting that ball in. So we've been practicing. So hopefully offensively and defensively, I can help on corners. Well, I'm sure the basketball team and their coaching staff may reach out to you at some <laughs> point. So just prepare yourself for that. <laughs> Izzy Stratton is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, a lot of people are asking about how you spell your name and where it came from. What's the origin of, of how you got your name? That's funny. Um, so my real name is Isabel, but Izzy definitely fits my personality better. And it used to be spelled I-Z-Z-Y, like normal. And then one day I was like probably 13 years old, really young. I just walked downstairs in the kitchen. My, my whole family is there. I go, guys, I can just spell my name I-Z-Z-I -Z now. Um, I like it because it's a palindrome, and you can spell it the same backwards and forwards. <laughs> and my dad just, like, looked at me, and he was like, okay. I'm like, it's a nickname, so I can do that. It's not actually my real name. And they're like, okay, that's fine. And it's stuck ever since. So that's how that came. Who doesn't love a good palindrome? I love a good palindrome. Come on. That is fantastic. Right. Izzy, uh, here's how it works. You come on the show, you get some BYU Sports Nation karma, and you're going to play super well tonight. Uh, so take that. You can divide it among your teammates if you'd like. But we send the karma to you for a, a good performance tonight against Cal State Fullerton. Good luck against the Titans. Thank you so much. <laughs> you got it. The freshman phenom, Izzy Stratton, with us on BYU Sports Nation. Send her back because Natalie Wells is dealing with a stress fracture. Starting. Starting. Starting center back with Leveni Vaca. So I, I love uh, women's soccer because the freshmen jump in right away and contribute. I, I want to say more than almost any other sport at BYU. The freshman, like, BYU plays freshmen that make an impact, multiple. Like, football, if you're a freshman and you play, it's like yeah. special teams. Yeah, maybe. Coach Rockwood has never really shied away from that. She's nope. always they been on right the forefront of that where she's like, if you can play now, you will play. In that sport, for some reason, they're more ready. I don't know exactly what it is. Like, physically, they're ready. The club soccer, I'm sure, plays High a level, factor in that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah let's go. Okay, 10 Eastern tonight, BYU Radio. It's also on ESPN+. Plus. You can sync those up if you want. Let's go. Okay, coming up, today's Elite Voice of the Day. And after meeting so many elite fans last night, who gets our rise and shout out, Jaron? Maybe it's a group of people. We'll see. This is BYU Sports Day. Inside your
Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried & Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. The Super Girls of Summer are back. What kind of friend are you looking for before school starts again? Kind. Creative. Honest. Fun. With so many good friends, you're sure to find one who speaks just to you. So make the connection before summer's over. Watch The Super Girls of Summer only on BYU TV or on the free app. Cosmic fish have spoken to me. I'm an alien. What have you been tap dancing on the barbecue again? I think my Captain Alphabet is sending me a message. The mothership is calling me home. <gasps> I'm the alien. No. We have to save Gonzo from a whole army of government agents. I have a joke for drumsticks. I have some loose jello, okay? Gonzo's one of us, and no matter what happens, we never forget one of our own. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. The show's on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app so you can listen to the women's soccer game tonight. Mm -hmm. And download the podcast, subscribe, rate, and review. Welcome back. Our question of the day, will the success of BYU football's 2022 season hinge on the outcomes of the first three games? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at Elk Cougar. Elk Cougar. On Twitter. <laughs> That's Apparently that an Elk Cougar. Cougar sound like. Says, yep, 100%. Start one and two or worse, and it'll be tough to be better than seven and five or maybe eight and four at best. I think one and two ends in eight and four. Start two and one or three and oh, and the dream is still alive for a magic, magical and memorable season. Hashtag BYUSA. The goals would change if BYU does not start at least two and one. Man. The goals would change. Ah, I don't and like that. We don't want the goals to change. Start 2-1 and one, at least. How about start 2-0? 3-0, oh. oh, oh, whatever. Start 2-0, and oh, and let's see what happens at Oregon. Yes. That's, that's what we want, right? Yes. That's what we want. Okay, today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To all the fans last night that we met, that was, that was great. We talked about uh, some of the unique stories uh, of people that came up. Uh, the Rohrer family, uh, almost seven years ago, uh, was in the delivery room preparing to have their baby and had BYU Sports Nation on in the delivery room. They came, and their daughter, uh, I believe Sophie. Who is now six. Who is six, almost seven, came, and we took a photo. Uh, so I was like, that's been almost seven years? That's unbelievable. Are you kidding me? So uh, good to see the roarer of the Cougars Super cool. family. Uh, and uh, shout-out to Carson Lundell. Yep. He lost. Ah. Shoot. One down in a very, very close match in the round of 32, but an amazing run at the U.S. Amateur Championship. Incredible. Our thanks to today's guest, Trevor Maddich and Izzy Stratton of BYU Women's Soccer. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, ran out of time. People were asking about you yesterday. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to our friend Amy Gant. It's yeah. Amy Follow BYU Sports Nation on Twitter at 2.30 Eastern for football media coverage after practice. Go Cougs.